All right, let's get started. Awesome. Well, welcome, guys. Thank you guys for joining the Rally Community Call on March 5th. This is our first Rally Community Call of the month. So thank you guys for joining us. It's been an exciting month of February with a ton of creators onboarded. So we look forward to keep a mom keeping the momentum going. We have a special agenda for you guys with a couple guest speakers today. If we want to go and show the agenda. Awesome. We will have new creators taken by Mahesh, and then we'll kick it over to David Berkowitz, which is going to be our creator for the day. He'll be talking about his CMO coin and, and how he's been using it across Clubhouse and a ton of other cool use cases. And then we'll send it over to Mike for KPIs of the Rally Network. Again, token supply for Mike. And then we'll uh, have a special guest speaker, someone I've been working really closely with, Jeremiah, who's been doing a fantastic job at spearheading Clubhouse. So I'll go ahead and kick it over to Mahesh and we'll get started. Just a quick reminder as we get started. Please keep your guys' mics on mute. If you guys have any questions, please post in chat and we will get to any Q&As at the end of the uh, call. So thank you guys. Cool. I think, Grant, you might be able to take these first two and I'll take the last three. Perfect. Yeah. So I've been working pretty closely with the Among Us Global Crew coin guys over at a Discord server. So what they are, they're pretty big, well-known top three Discord server among us. They are primarily focused on running tournaments and really cool use cases of gating Discord channels and text channels. They also give uh, certain permissions in Discord. There are certain permissions that are like, you know, that are very, very like valued pretty high in terms of, you know, GIF channels, text channels, permissions. And then run, of course, tournaments across another Fortnite server as well. So this crew coin will be used not only for the Among Us Global Discord server, but also another Fortnite tournament server. So something we're uh, taking a look at as we, as we explore Discord more. So really excited to be working with us. We launched last Sunday, and uh, so he's still been applying the coin to his channel as well. So we're still utilizing that Rally bot, which is great for any Discord servers or creators. Okay, and the classic crime, I guess, is Rob on? Maybe Rob Simpson could go over this really quickly. Yeah, hey there. Can you hear me? Yep. Check, check. Okay, awesome. Yeah, so yeah. Classic Crime is led by their their front man, Matt, and they're a, an alt band that formed up in Seattle and sort of led this independent funding charge many years ago. So basically when the when the big labels weren't giving them the, the deal they wanted, they ended up going straight to, to crowdfunding. And Matt has been a big proponent of crypto and has recently launched CrimeCoin with the plan to do exclusive NFT releases as well as run regular you know, private stream and, and ticketed events in addition to ongoing stream engagements. So very excited to have Matt and the classic crime on the platform. All right. Who's got ARC? Grant, do you, do you have an overview on ARC? Yeah, yeah, I'll take uh, I'll take ARC. So ARC actually came in through, is was probably, well, many of you guys know, RAC. So we're really excited to be working with that team over there. Ark, or as known as Torrential, is a, is a hip hop artist, and he, and he has this very unique style of music that he's actually willing to utilize for for certain projects and use cases, including NFTs and and really cool engaging use cases with his fans. And so he's actually looking to as well do a Discord and sample in certain beats for use cases, and and really utilizing his coin to kind of make that funky style that he's really looking to like a blockchain spin on his music. So really excited to be working with him and his team. I've been chatting with this team, so we're actually looking forward to actually having his team actually come on and, and talk talk to us because they've been doing a ton of blockchain work with with music and, and nfts as well so really excited to be working with torrential and his team as well okay so we've got dan dan shabel so he is a new york times best-selling author he's he's a bit of a renaissance man on the on the business side in terms of workplace intelligence He's a keynote speaker, he's a podcast host, he does a lot of different things and so i had a couple of notes in here that i don't think made it to the slide but he's doing some coin based office hours. Um, he's thinking, he's still thinking through his exact plan, but in some of his later phases, he's thinking about getting other industry partners and enterprise business leaders to use his work coin. So it's meant to be like an umbrella coin around workplace intelligence and the, you know, the different concepts there that he, he generates content around. So really excited to, to see him, you know, get going. He's very influential in the space and moving on Joseph Jaffe, <clears throat> similar in that he's he also does a lot of things as, as Dan he's a you know thought leader an author he's a host of a podcast called a live stream called Corona TV and so he wants to use his coin to engage podcast guests as well as listeners he wants to bring in corporate coin sponsors where uh, potentially like a Microsoft or some some corporate sponsor could like buy out episodes of his 
podcast to cover a certain topic using his coin. And he's also interested in, in streaming alerts because he does, he does stream using StreamYards, StreamYard. And so he's looking into our Streamlabs integration and wrapping that into a stream, which he, I believe, pushes to YouTube and a couple other, you know, non, non-Twitch streaming platforms. Um, he's also, also been offering coin for brainstorming sessions, strategic advisory, mentoring, you know, coaching and, and things like that. And so again, just getting going, just like Dan, I think he launched in the past week or so, but just exploring the, the many possibilities for coin transaction use cases. And they're very, both him and Dan are very, very excited. Uh, and then moving on to David, I'll let him introduce himself since he's here. Yeah, yeah. so uh, excited to be here. And I, I could share a few things if you like, just a, a few examples of how I watch this, if that works for you. Yeah, that'd be great. Well, the screen share is disabled. If you like, I could show a few posts or I could just speak to it either way. Oh yeah, we, we could stop the share and, and pull up your screen. Great, yeah, yeah. Just got a, a few things queued up that might make it really practical because when Jeremiah first talked to me about the coin, I was really excited about how I'd use it as a creator. And then I, and, and then I was trying to think, okay, well, like, how can I make this most effective for the community? And, and before I even launched the coin, I started with this post. I, so I run this 2000 members group. It's mostly in Slack, zero marketers. And, and so I started with this post where I said, so if we had a ticker symbol, what would it be? And it sparked some really interesting conversation because I'd spent all night trying to come up with what the ticker symbol would be. And I really didn't know. And this was bugging me as someone who likes naming things. And, and Melissa Wallace later, I mean, this, by the way, this was the most engaging thread I've ever had in the community. And so, so some really fun ideas, some play on the serial name. And then Melissa Wallace, she started sharing some ad industry names, uh, click-through rates, key, uh, key performance indicators. And I was like, okay, the, the, she's onto something. I Google marketing acronyms, CMO comes up. Um, Melissa wound up being my winner. And so, and then there were a few things that I started doing as soon as I actually had the CMO coin it launched. One was, this is the new kudos channel that launched specifically for the community. So I was encouraging members to go and, and share, share their own kudos and thanks to other members. And, and then actually you know, tipping some of them with, uh, with these coins, I started including coins, uh, 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 the coins in my newsletter. So a few thousand people uh, get my own weekly update. And so, so I shared the launch in the newsletter, but then I, I did another added twist where I use this program Sparkloop for managing my referral rewards, really good program, a sparkloop.app. And so you could see here, I've got 25 CMO coins for every uh, 10 referrals. And I even set this up as a recurring thing. So anytime someone refers as many people, then uh, great. It's one, one added bonus. And, and just yesterday, while on a, another call with, with some of the creators, I was really inspired by what Matty Moen is doing with his art coin. And so I, I, I set up something that was directly lifted from, from him and, and borrowed from that inspiration where I'm wondering, okay, so what can, like having a more generically named coin like CMO, then it, then there are others who might want to launch premium offerings. There are others who, who might want to reward their followers in some way. And then, and then try to come up with what does a menu look like for the community? So, so they're also motivated because I can then give that some of that top down promotion. So I clearly just get it warmed up and I'm really looking forward to learning from so many of these other creators here, anyone else who's curious about the community itself. I just included a link in the chat, but just thrilled to sidebar with you anytime. Thanks everyone. Awesome. Thank you, David. I appreciate that. We'll go ahead and kick it over to Mike for the KPIs. All right. So this week, um, over on the mainnet side, total liquidity, pretty flat. I think generally that small little increase there is mostly probably due to slight increases in, in baseline Ethereum and, and rally pricing. So pretty flat there. Community treasury, as expected, is flat as since the yield delegating vaults are turned off. On top of that, though, of course, our, our fundraising agent does have, you know, about 26 million in their side. And I think they're just finish, finishing wrapping up, chasing down the last a little bit over a million in terms of commitments from, from the initial tranche of investors. We've had a decent, a decent bump in the amount of rally bridged in from the mainnet uh, to the side chain at 43k this past week. Moving over to the side chain, you know, as usual, kind of steady increases. And in, actually, this is a larger increase this week than 
than usual in terms of the amount of rally back in creator coins up to 7.12 million, up 8%. Volume, I think, was down, uh, even though we've had, I think this week there was about six or seven coins went live this week, although I'm not entirely sure if all the creators of those coins actually uh, announced them to their communities yet or not. Other stuff here, I don't know if there's anything specifically notable this week. The, uh, the donation amounts is up a large amount this week, although I think that's just mainly due to one very large uh, transaction to one creator. Otherwise, I think that's that's about it of, of stuff to note on the sidechain. So if we move over to token supply, so if you guys remember at the beginning of each month, we are now endeavoring to try to estimate the amount of total uh, circulating rally that will be uh, circulating at the end of the month. So if we go back to February, I believe the last month we have projected around 124 million rally will be in the circulating supply. We were re reasonably close, so we ended the month at 121 million. For the month of March, we're estimating that the end of the month uh, will be 145 million. This 23 million increase is all due to uh, reasonably standard stuff. So this is, includes the rally that's issued as part of the liquidity pool rewards. Obviously, there's no more rally being issued as part of the yield delegating vaults. On top of that, we have uh, side chain operations where people are buying and selling stuff on our creator coins in the side chain, as well as I think every month our fundraising agent does do a handful of continued sales against the, the large tranche of uh, rally that we've given them, as well as standard payments to community projects and advisors. There is uh, this month we're doing a one-time additional 2 million rally that we're adding to the circulating supply. There is 2 million rally that is sitting in the yield delegating vaults that are unclaimed. Typically, we don't include that until they're claimed, but since this is the last, there will be no more rally being issued in that program. We're including it in this month's circulating supply. So if you got some unclaimed rally, go ahead and claim it uh, or, or not. It won't go away. You can claim it anytime later, but uh, we're counting it in the circuit. I think that's it. Awesome. Thank you, Mike. We'll go ahead and send it over to Jeremiah. That will be our guest speaker for the week. Well, hey, everybody. I am uh, just delighted to be an advisor now, just over two months about, and I appreciate everybody's support and as we move through this. So what I wanted to focus on, and we can go to the next slide, is this playbook that I put together. However, I will be handing this over to Tuan, who's also on the call running operations. And eventually there's some other roles that'll be hired within Rally full-time. I'm not an employee, uh, so it makes sense. Uh, all of this stuff eventually live with the employee group. And when we were onboarding our new cohorts, so the two areas that I'm responsible for helping to onboard folks with the team is in the social audio space. So like Clubhouse, Twitter spaces. And then secondly is the business influencers. Like we just heard from David Berkowitz and his CMO coin and community as long as Don, Dan Schwabel and Joseph Jaffe also peers to David and myself. And what I noticed right away in the conversations uh, were that the use cases were very different. So unlike perhaps a gamer that might be using Twitch and or other StreamYard tools and maybe a few social networking, social media tools, folks like David Berkowitz have several to a dozen different digital assets that they interact with their fans. This could be, a, it could be their blog, a newsletter, a private community like Slack, live streaming, YouTube, Facebook video, LinkedIn, Twitter, also Clubhouse. And then they might have reviews on Amazon that they need to funnel people to, e-commerce pages, speaking page, speaker bureau page, uh, archive YouTube videos. I mean, it's a lot of stuff. And so what, what I noticed that the, it really wasn't suitable for them. They need, they had to think through a lot more things. So we quickly put together this playbook, which I'd love to show you just the high level. So you can understand we're thinking about creators success first. Let's kick over to the next slide. So this deck is also built on the feedback from the creators. So let's call this creator sourced. You've heard of crowdsourced. So this is creator sourced. And we're continuing to talk to these creators. In fact, yesterday on Thursday, we had a creator call for those two cohorts. We even had Bumani X, the, the face of the Clubhouse app show up. We had Maddie Mo show up. We had David Berkowitz show up and about a dozen others. Some of them are newer co coin holders as well. And we showed off some of the new features. We asked them, what are they doing? We're taking, furiously taking notes so we can add these things to the deck and then Tuan and team will continue to update it. 
let's go to the next slide. You can see that we're getting this contributions from a number of the creators and there's more coming. So we're just trying to document what's working, what's not working, what's been tried, how can we learn from each other? So let's go to the next and we'll see um, exactly what this looks like. So this will be, I want to pause here. In fact, this is all I'm going to show. The, the full creator deck, the full playbook is not available here in public, but I'll at least show you this table of contents. We really want to reserve the full playbook for the creators themselves. Frankly, it's secret sauce and we're not just going to hand it out right now. So the way we organize this, and by the way, the nomenclature and taxonomy is going to change as we start to model this out. And, and Tuwan is very thoughtful to think about how could we build a playbook that suits all creators in all of the different industries that we're working at. But just for today's purpose, let's just consider this a draft. So the green section might be where some of the creators might start. And really the first phase is to drive demand for their coin. And you could hear David was doing that. He asked his community in Slack, hey, what should we name this coin? Secondly, getting that coin into circulation within the fan base and community. And so there's a number of things that we listed out. So number one, make sure you list out, you add the coin to all of your digital profiles. So David's adding it to all his social media profiles, all 50 of them around the internet. And then there's some of the things like the coin giveaway. Number three could be rewarding top contributors. David actually said he did that. And we have screenshots of his Slack community of how he specifically did that. Actually, sorry, he's number four the community kudos. We actually have a screenshot of his work. There's also other use cases of rewarding our fans for sharing information. Last night, we saw a game show in the History Club in Clubhouse run by Jason. And he was asking, guess what, questions around, I'm sure you can guess, history. <laughs> and people could, and there was these tiered things. Kevin was there witnessing it as well. And he raised, Jason, not only did he give away coins, up to eight coins for the people who went like five tiers in a question, but he also encouraged people to purchase coin, even to step up to the game show as an ante. And he raised 600 US dollars last night. And that was the, the first kick of his coin, the first time he introduced it to his club. So that was very, very positive early signals to see that actually happening. And there's just a number of things as well. And towards the end, we want to encourage the creators after they started to circulate the coin. It's not just about giving away the coin. We, we know that's fun, uh, but we also need to make sure that the coin is transacting and, and we're building economy. And eventually, you know, they'll start to use the coin peer to peer, fan to fan. So they need to develop a menu of perks. You know, what are the premium offerings that you'll get if you're a coin holder? I'm sure you've seen the Rolling Stone article that Kurt led to talk about Portugal, the man, around how they have their private Discord server. So at that point, we want to try to traverse the creators to the medium section, this yellow area here. And a lot of these ideas came from Mahesh and Jason, really around, could you do a fundraiser or a group challenge where people need to purchase a, a set of coins in order to access some, maybe some interesting media or a top speaker or a cool new effect on a, on a game or within a community. We, we've also seen the video stream integrating the coin donations into live video streaming, which is already a common practice in the in the gaming side can we interact make that interact with some of the business streamers who we are also working with and then there's just a whole litany of other ideas that we have and even some specific clubhouse use cases we'll build some for twitter spaces and now there's fireside which i joined last night with mark cuban and there's no shortage of platforms so we'll continue to build this playbook out and really try to understand all of the permutations i mean really we're all we're just pioneering and that's why it's so exciting. It's like the early days of social media. We're trying to figure this out. You know, David Berkowitz is an innovator. He's an Bumani is an innovator. They're trying to figure out how to incorporate this coin to really engage fans in a different way. So we're just trying our best to keep up with these leaders and, and document what's happening to these early practices and eventually turn them into best practices. So we're not at the blue level yet, but that will come over time. And we'll also be hearing updates from the rally team of new features, which I will wait for the team to announce. And then from there, we'll figure out the, the advanced use cases. And we might see some programmatic examples, but let's not spoil the fun things that are coming. So that's really at a high level where we are at. And one, one other thing in for those that are live on the call in 30 minutes at noon Pacific today, we will be doing 
the next the third launch of clubhouse coins and we have a room on that you can check out mahesh's tweet and see that where we're all going to go in and all of the new coin holders will making their pronouncements in the clubhouse room and it'll be a fun affair and we're planning to do that on a frequent basis i per, perhaps weekly but we'll see how it goes so just the message here is we're trying to build this playbook out to make sure that our creators are successful thanks grant thank you jeremiah always a pleasure hearing from you awesome well that concludes our agenda now we'll open it up for any q a questions for mr berkowitz of the cmo coin any of the internal rally team or jeremiah as well if you have any questions please type in chat all right give it a couple more minutes well i'm like well that will probably conclude now our community call hey, yeah yeah, I apologize. I just wanted to ask them, how do you guys effectively create community? What are what are some as far as how to create really good community? What what could you share? So who's speaking so we could address you? Sorry, this is a Todd Smith. My coin is the uh, Sailor Coin 3 CRA. And uh, you and I actually follow each other on uh, uh, Twitter, but I would just love to know like what effective ways you you are creating community that you see are really effective in giving long-term value to your coin. Oh, I was going to toss that to David, but he just ran away. He's, he's in between something. I'm here. Do you want to take first crack at that? Did you hear the question? Yeah. So, well, well, it's funny because I was actually just typing something similar into chat, especially if, if people weren't asking questions that, that was directly about that. And, and, and one of the things that's been really surprising to me about the process is, is not just knowing Jeremiah, but getting to work with the whole team across a slew of ideas and it's just constantly trying to see well like i mean it feels like every hour the rally team is learning and 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 then there's that goal of trying to disseminate this as many ways as possible and and yeah like i'm spending way more time on calls with this group than i ever expected but i'm like it, it, it's amazing being part of this community and different on calls like this and on the discord and in clubhouse there are all these interactions and all these folks who are just supporting each other. And like, I can't remember ever seeing anything like, I mean, it, it's almost like early days of some platforms like Twitter, even Clubhouse in a way where it's just like, everyone's just rooting for each other to figure this stuff out. And so so I think a lot of that learning is happening really rapidly. And, and it's good to see even Jeremiah like transitioning his knowledge management to the internal rally team just to try to really build and scale that. Thanks, David. So was your question, Todd, really around how do you build a community with your fans? I think just how do you, how do you, and, for, and thanks, thank you guys for both answering these questions. This is one oh, of the I haven't that, answered yet, though. Oh. <laughs> I don't know if I have the answer. <laughs> and, and how are you effectively creating community and, and what, what are some major things or some, I guess, basic things that you're doing within your community that are really effective as far as engaging with them and connecting with them more with uh, that are real practical? Yes. Okay. Well, I mean, we're going where they are, first of all, right? We go to the social networks where they are. So there's, so I actually did a report at Forrester. I was a tech analyst 10 years ago. And the first report I had to write was online communities build or join. And, and the answer, by the way, is win. When do you do either of those? And, and so you want to join communities where your customers already are. Maybe it's the top part of your marketing funnel you want to grow. But over time, you want to bring them back and host your own community like David is. Effectively, he is paying for Slack, so it's his own community. So it's in his own property. So in this case, he's doing both. And that's the smart strategy at a broader perspective is when you do that. You bring your closest customers. And, and many of his, his community members are premium members paying to access him and the other slew of, of folks within that private Slack community. So that's something to think about. I mean, having a series of events is, is very helpful. So we're hosting events with our fans in Clubhouse and Facebook and beyond. And we're continuing, we've always done this, like David and I for over 10 years, uh, put out episodic content and long form content in newsletters or blog posts and or videos. I mean, we just in our industry, in the business space, it, it's publish or perish. Like if, we, if we're not publishing, people aren't thinking about us. They're not talking about us. So we know that we're, we need to make sure that we're saying things that are relevant and helping to advance the conversation. One simple tactic that I do that I'll share with you now is when there's a new topic, what I do is I research and I interview my actual community members to find out their thoughts. 
attitudes, best practices, early practices, and then I document those into one central document. I've done this, I don't know, 50 times. Uh, so it's no secret, really. And, and then when I release it in public, I thank all of them. And then they go and promote that work elsewhere. And that brings me lots of energy and business and revenues, frankly, by being doing that service for that community. So there's a few thoughts and tips. David, did you want to add to that? Yeah, I, I mean, if you cover, covered a lot, a lot of it really well. And, and so, some of it's just constantly like, uh, you know, like for, for premium members, then it, it was easier to say to them first, look, like, I, I, I want you to help figure this out with me. Just anyone, uh, I just created a simple Google form as soon as I set up the coin and then had, had anyone just leave me their, their rally ID all in one place. So I could just manage that a, a little bit easier, but then, and then it was just pure giveaway. Uh, they're, they're already my VIP customers. So it's great. Like, and, and even just constantly trying to do these pilots for engagement, like with my, with my newsletter, using that same spark loop platform that I showed. I ran my first uh, spark loops had the ability to run contests for quite a while. It's the first time I ever ran a contest where I said, anyone who refers a, a reader over the next week will get entered into a drawing for all these extra coins. So it's just trying to spark that. And, and now I'm, I'm really excited to see that next phase in terms of like, what do I get out of? What do I put on my own menu? And, and that menu piece, I think is going to be really key for that clarity. Cause there, there are some like, like if you, if you follow Joe Jaffe of Jaffe coin fame, I, I think he was one of the first to just articulate that so, so well and saying like, you give me 10 coins. I mentioned you here, you give me 50 coins, you become a guest, you know, all this X, Y, and Z very clear quid pro quo. And I, and so I, I think like. All of us who are creating will have to just really articulate that FAQ. And like, I, one, one of the things that's come up with Jeremiah is that, that the more we talk about this without saying the words crypto, cryptocurrency, blockchain, any of those, and, and it's, that felt very natural to me because I'm not like a techie guy coming in here. So it's just, and, and I, and I've had that request more than one occasion from people who are really, really savvy and they're like, do the explain it to me like I'm five version. And that's, I think, what we just constantly need. I think the new term is explain it to me like, like I'm a golden retriever. That's what they say now. <laughs> so yeah, you have to be able to articulate you know, rally without ever saying crypto. And so the trick is to focus on how the relationships between the creator and the fan change. That, that's really how you, that's the only way to do it. Well, that's, that's a great way to do it. Let me back up. I appreciate that guys really and i will be sending you guys some of our three CRA coins so thanks so much yes thank you great david i had an interesting question for you i i have uh i was curious why you you chose slack as kind of one of your core communication or community uh, elements i i get that you have a business audience but I, i'm interested in kind of the real-time nature of slack and how much that adds to the engagement and the the sort of you know fan to fan or customer to customer connection within your community as opposed to just being kind of a one-way broadcast of you to your community like like i think of newsletters as kind of a one-way you know street of of content and, and publishing and and sharing of ideas um and i'm curious why you why you chose slack and what you see kind of what, what sort of elements of your community did you see kind of emerge from from enabling a more of a real-time communication platform yeah well well uh, I started on Slack in 2018, and and so if you think back to around then, then, then there there's a the, well the, there's this design concept that that I, I I love most advanced yet acceptable, and Slack was very much then where like for for pretty much everyone joining the community then it was the the first time that they join something might have been their first time joining anything on Slack, and if they've worked in in tech at that point, then it was their first time joining Slack that wasn't tied to a tech company's corporate account. So this was still kind of weird, but still becoming mainstream enough that it's like, okay, there, there were enough people who would go and take that leap. And, and so, but guarantee that, that there was a learning curve that prohibited some people who would have joined a Facebook or LinkedIn or Google group. So, but I, I like I loved it co coincidentally for this month, for me, the epitome of 
what Slack was was going to be great for was what I called the South by Southwest paradigm, where for me, for a few weeks of the year, there are about like 3% of my network hogging 95% of the social airwaves out there. And it's just South by that, South by that. I'm like, no one else cares who's, who's not going. And so just being able to put that all in one place, having people talk to <laughs> no end in that channel and then, but not pollute the main feed. So, and that's worked and we've been growing by a, about a hundred members a month and it's working well. And so, so now to Jeremiah's point, uh, like as a creator, I'm not a Slack creator. I'm not a newsletter publisher. Like I'm me, my, my community. I, it took me a little while to stop calling my community a Slack community because we're a community that exists for each other. I love the upstream platform. If you, if, if you spend time on, on that at all, like check out the serial marketers group in there or check out any big fan of what they've built. So really good for like, like video speed networking chats. We do weekly guest speaker. Jeremiah was actually my first guest speaker about a year ago on zoom in the salon series. I started that series with him. And so, so, so mutual guinea pigs here. And, and so Slack to me remains an important part of that core. I think the integrations with Rally will, will be great, especially as it's just easier to include things like, like Jeremiah just told me flat out, it's like, I, you should get people to include their rally names in their Slack profile descriptions. And so just seeing basic things like that, very, very helpful. And I think are going to need to become more or organic, but it's like, if I, if I was starting a professional community, I, I, I have mixed feelings about Slack. I also, and so I've got my own like thought leadership newsletter, but I started a separate MailChimp list for community members. And I have this wonderful editor who aggregates all these posts and then I, I, I adds a few highlights of main news, like, oh, we're now on Rally that go out to almost every member every week over email because not everyone spends all day in Slack. And sometimes like for me, email is a really easy way to digest info. So I want to meet the community members where they are. I think that's a great th reason that Rally can serve somebody like David who has 72 yeah. channels, I think I just heard. So that's a benefit of a blockchain based product. Thank you, David. Thank you, David. Awesome. Do we have any more questions for any of our guest speakers or Jeremiah? If not, we're going to wrap that up. I just want to give a nice little call out. How cool is Jeremiah's Airstream in the background? That background is. Oh, did awesome. you notice the uh, rally red in my background? I, I'm yes, a huge fan. Yes, that is to, huge that fan. is the theme today. There's articles for anybody in here that has a couple minutes to spare. There is articles on Jeremiah working from an Airstream. I think that is so unique and it looks great in the background. So I just want to give that a quick call out. It's my first time seeing it. Thanks. Awesome. Well, we'll go ahead and Airstream office. That's right. So thank you guys for joining this call. We'll be uh, moving over shortly in about 20 minutes over to the Clubhouse event today with Jeremiah Mahesh um, and a couple others on this call. So we're really excited to launch some more coins. And so we're looking forward to seeing some of you guys there. For next week, we'll be here, same time, same place. And uh, we'll talk to you guys then. Thank you guys for joining this week. Have a great weekend. See you later, y'all.